Hi, I'm Deb McCann. Hi, I'm Marty McCann. We're the owners of McCann Professional Dog Trainers. Actually, I went to high school in Dundas. Debbie went to high school in Ancaster, Ontario. Her basketball team came to my gymnasium to play against our, our girls' team. And uh, Deb sort of stood out from the rest of the girls. And I was in a group of guys that came to check her out. Yeah, we, uh, we did a lot of roller skating. Uh, they don't do that anymore, I don't think. But we did a lot of roller skating at the Dundas Arena. And um, that's really where we got to know each other. It wasn't easy when we started our business in 1982 uh, to make a living. Uh, at the time, I worked for the Royal Bank of Canada and Deb worked for the uh, Recreation Department in the town of Ancaster. She managed three swimming pools. Um, we started on a part-time basis. Uh, initially, we um, rented a little hall and uh, we took out an ad in the newspaper and for 30 days and for the first 27 days, nobody really responded. We thought, oh well, there's $300 out the window, but it was a nice try. And then the last three days, we suddenly filled our one class. And uh, from there, it's just been onwards and upwards. You know, one of the interesting things about uh, our business being, um, you know, dog training, there was, when we got started, there was no other business around like it. There was nothing to copy. People actually thought we were pretty crazy trying to make a living at dog training. It was all, um, you know, volunteer groups, clubs that were doing the dog training, and we decided to start a business. And really the reason why is when Marty was 28, he had open heart surgery. He had a malformed valve, had to be replaced. They put a pig's valve in, and that was 1982. And it was sort of that year that he said, I don't want to work at my job that I'm doing right now for the rest of my life. I want to train dogs. So... Um, once he was healthy, um, we decided to start our own dog training business. In the span of that year, um, we had open heart surgery, followed by um, buying our first house, getting pregnant and having our first child, and then starting our own business. And it was a pretty crazy start because um, we the really... The economy was terrible at yeah. the time. And we didn't really know what we were doing. Uh, we were very good dog trainers. We had already been training dogs for 10 or so years. And, um, you know, we had done very well at that. And we were teaching classes with a, with a local club. And um, we just decided that we wanted to, you know, to, to do it a little bit different, be a little bit more modern in our methods. And uh, so we got started. And um, that first year, I had a little baby. And... Uh, Oh, one thing I'll never forget was Marty's mother, who was very special to us. Uh, she would come out to our classes uh, every night, and um, <clears throat> I had a big basket, and my daughter Kaylee would be in that basket, and she would look after her. And between classes, I would go into the washroom and breastfeed her and then hand her back to Grandma, and uh, I'd go on and teach classes. <clears throat> Interestingly enough, that little girl who was born into that... Uh, 30-some-odd years ago is now an integral part of our business. And actually, prior to 1986, we were teaching classes in Toronto and in London, and my wife, Deb, got tired of uh, all the travel, said, why don't we've got a, a child here, why don't we just do classes locally, make people come to us? So we were lucky to enter into a, a lease agreement at the Rockton Fairgrounds. We were there for 10 years from 80s, 1986 to 1996. We outgrew the place. And we finally decided to take the big step of building our own facility, which we did. And here we are 20 years later. We've done an expansion and we train over 600 dogs every week. Uh, we've got 16 great full-time employees and another 40 associate trainers. Our daughter, Kale, is uh, really helping us a great deal in terms of um, training the staff and uh, leading. And we're into a, an important transition. It's an exciting time for us. Well, everything we have done um, <laughs> for the last 40 plus years revolves around dogs. Our travel, our work, our family, everything is, is about dogs. Actually, um, I got to be about, I think, 40 before we had ever had a holiday 
that was non-dog related. That's true. And I think it was we that year that World. we went to Disney World with our three children and didn't have any dogs with us. We um, we always, when especially when we were working for other people, we always took our holidays associated with a dog show or a seminar or something. On our honeymoon, we went to a dog Yeah, show. even on our honeymoon, on our way to our honeymoon to Quebec City, we stopped at a dog show in Kingston along the way. Kelly was only a week or two old. She was attending her first dog three show. Three weeks, three weeks <laughs> old at her first dog show. Um, but the, uh, the dogs have been very important. Um, we never started out ever thinking that this was going to be a business. We started out, you know, and in fact, I got my first um, Airedale. Marty got me this dog because I was going to college, living in an apartment, and he bought it. He got it for me to be a companion and, and uh, you know, just to have the dog in the house. And um, and then we were recommended by uh, his stepmother that we should obedience train this dog. And we started going to a local obedience school, and I was training the dog. It was my dog, and I was having pretty good success. But every, every time as we drove home, we would be arguing about what I did right and what I did wrong. He desperately wanted to train this dog. So I eventually gave up and let him train the dog. And he finished the course, did really well, and I said, that's it, it's my dog, I'm training, get your own dog. So he did go out and get his own dog. And so then we went through all the levels with our two Airedale Terriers. And um, did competing, traveling. Yeah, yeah. and um, so I think there was one year when we were in our mid-20s where I think 40 weekends out of the year we were at some sort of dog event. We are pretty crazy about uh, about the dogs and the dog training specifically, and um, you know the biggest thing that I think impacted our life was the fact that Marty had open heart surgery at 28, and then again eight years later. Without that um, impetus, yep, motivated us. We probably wouldn't have done this because I'm more of a conservative person. I probably would never have given up my job to do this, but Marty had sort of a different look on life. I didn't think I was gonna live. <laughs> and uh, and so he wanted to be a dog trainer. So he quit, I stayed working for a few more years. Um, 1982, we started the business. 88, I was uh, pregnant with my second child. I took my leave of absence, my maternity leave, and took an extended leave of absence. During that year in 1988, we realized I could never go back to work. Then. I think we got accepted to write a book on Flyball. Publisher, yeah. uh, and so you took a year sabbatical to do that, and we never did write the book. On and we and we realized that with my help in the administrative end of the business, business um, really took off. it took off. And um, you know, we had many dogs uh, as our children grew up. We had ten dogs in the house at any one time, so we were a very dog happy family, and uh, everybody was involved in the training and the discussions around the, the kitchen table, and uh, it's really a wonder all three didn't end up in the dog business. I, I'm not sure, but uh, we're glad one did. And something I remember our business, very, okay. Something I remember very fondly is in 1988, when you were uh, busy raising our newborn Lexi, you let me take over Bingo's training. And I took over the training, and then it came, we went to a trial, and Debbie says, ah, I'm going in the ring with him. She went in and she got a perfect 200 score. <laughs> This comment is to give himself credit for training my dog. <laughs> uh, <laughs> you handle it, though. <laughs> We're teaching the dogs basic skills to, to stay, to walk on a leash without pulling, to come and call. But there's something beyond that because... When you're teaching a dog to do those things, you're also teaching the dog about who's in charge in a very non-confrontational way. You're teaching the dog that there are rules to life um, that, uh, you know, that's going to help those families in everyday life. You know, it's not just about being able to do a sit-stay. It's just, it's about listening. It's about allowing your nails to be clipped or your hair to be brushed or the burrs to be taken out. It's about leadership. It's about teaching the dog that they have to listen. And, and, and we use those skills of sit-stay, down-stay, coming when called, walking, to give, to give the, the pet owners or empower them with the skills that they need. We are really people trainers. We are training people to train their dogs. And once we train people, really, they can be trained for the rest of their life. They should be able to, or we hope they're able to have skills to manage their dog for the next 10, 15 years so that if the dog does make an error, they know what to do, they know how to fix it. 
really that's what I want. I want to give these people skills to manage their dog so that they enjoy their dog the way I enjoy my dog. Certainly there you can teach your dog to sit, down, stay, come, all the bases, walk on the leash. But ultimately, in the simplest form, you're teaching the dog to listen. We're teaching the owner to be the leader. Can dogs in the future, I think, is going to continue on with obedience classes. We've worked hard over the last 30 years to develop programs. 30 and, plus years. And, um, you know, a, a reputation for people that they know they can come here and, and learn about how to train a dog. Um, but I think, you know, in this new age, this new age of uh, technology, we have to expand our, our borders. So, um, you know, we're hoping this year to uh, branch out into an online uh, training program so that people who aren't close enough to drive to classes to, you know, to attend classes with us, that they can, um, you know, get the same information through, I think, some really terrific uh, video training program. Between all breeds, um, family pets, that's what we do. It's an audio clip right there. Yeah. <laughs> that's what we do. <laughs>